I'm Mike from Cine Studios. In this quick tutorial video, I'm going to show you how to use the Universe Arena Pipeline to do some quick lighting for Polygon Western in Unity 2020.1. Uh, this guide is going to be pretty similar to the one I've just done, but I'm going to show you a few new things. So uh, we come up here and we go Window and we come down to Package Manager. Uh, this, this is basically the, the first step is we need to bring in the pack. Uh, we change this to My Assets and then we find Polygon Western and we click Import. I've already done this, it's already in the project. We don't need to bring in the post processing stack with uh, URP, it already exists. Uh, so all we need to do is uh, find the asset, open the demo scene. You'll notice that everything in here is pink. Uh, that is because the Universe Arena Pipeline uh, materials are different to the standard ones, so we need to upgrade those. So it's really easy, you just go Edit, Arena Pipeline, Universe Arena Pipeline, Upgrade Project Materials to Universe Arena Pipeline. And that will convert our scene over so that it is uh, compatible with Universe Arena Pipeline. Uh, everything looks pretty similar to the standard Arena Pipeline. It's a little bit of a different uh, in colour, but nothing too, too crazy. So uh, first things first, I'll show you, you guys can select the uh, sky box and then you can actually change the settings if you want on that this is just something we include with some of our packs uh, you can just scroll this UV offset and it will actually convert the time of day I am gonna just set this uh, to a little bit more of a kind of an evening shot uh, just for this guide so nice and easy uh, once we've done that the next thing to do is probably just get our scene lighting set up so we come down here and we go rendering lighting and then we'll open this box here uh, we want to go to environment. Now you have the option in here to change the skybox and you can make it like brighter or, uh, or darker, but honestly, I just leave it at one. Um, that's fine most of the time. Uh, let's turn the fog on. Uh, the fog is something we can use to like kind of add a bit more, uh, you know, kind of depth to the scene. So you have the option here to change the fog color. Uh, you could go with like more of an evening kind of scene. Uh, you could go with an alien planet, uh, or you could certainly go with something a little bit more colourful. I'm going to go with something a little more colourful, uh, just a little bit. Uh, I'll still drop it down just a tad, uh, but I think that kind of looks nice. Uh, and then you also have the option to change the amount too. So you could set this to 10 and it could be like a real dusty one. Let's go 100, it could be like a dusty scene. Uh, or you could set it to what I had, which is um, a little bit further out. So you've got the option there. You can also grab these and scroll them to move it in and out. Uh, but it will take a while because it's uh, it's a big scene. So uh, once that's set up, nice and easy, let's get into the post-processing. Uh, this is really, really simple in here. Let's just make sure we've got our post-processing uh, visibility turned on. So the lights, make sure the lights are turned on. Uh, and then make sure the post processing is turned on and make sure it's actually selected in here too. Now, super easy in uh, the universe arena pipeline to get this working. We just go up to game object, volume, global volume. It'll make a new volume in the scene. Um, and then we just come over here and we click new. And this will make a new like profile to hold um, the overrides. And now we just need to click uh, add override post processing. And then we can start adding stuff. I'm going to start with bloom because I like bloom. Uh, it's always kind of a winner. So we want to make sure that we've got uh, the bloom settings. Uh, we just need to drop those the threshold down. Probably not too far, I don't think. It's just, uh, I don't know, something like that's good. I don't think ambient occlusion works with this version. No, they haven't got it working yet. So I'm really hoping they're going to add that. There's a few things that are missing, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, but we can do a lot, of the, a lot of the kind of main features. So let's add the vignette. I like some of that. Just to get that started, we'll just add a little bit of that up to uh, maybe this kind of setting. Just a little bit in the scene, I think looks pretty good. Um, it's always kind of a subjective thing. And I like to change the color to like a dark kind of blue, I think looks kind of nice. So we'll just add a little bit of that. I mean, you could go crazier if you wanted. You could go like real hard out, not that hard out, but uh, you can make it look kind of like a vintage camera or something. But um, I think just a little bit's good. Uh, the next thing to add here is the uh, color. This is going to be the main thing. It's going to be the color balance. So we add the uh, color adjustments uh, layer, um, which allows us to like add a little more contrast. I think that's a really important one. So we add a little bit more contrast in there. Uh, typically, you might want to add a little bit of saturation, just a little bit. Uh, I probably wouldn't add too much. It's going to be really easy to blow that out. Uh, even the contrast, I'd keep that low. Uh, what else do we want to have in here? We probably want to have some color curves. Um, not color lookup, we don't want that. I think the color curves one is a good one. Actually, no, let's not use that one either. Uh, I want to use white balance. So they've actually split these out. These used to be in one panel, but uh, I want to, maybe a little bit of temperature can be good because you could go like 
warmer or colder on that. I typically usually add a little bit just to warm the scenes up. Uh, and then we'll also add some, what else should we add here? Uh, maybe, yeah, we could do a little bit of this, this work here. I typically will play around with these, uh, just to get some color. So these are kind of like, they kind of push the, the shadows and things, um, into like different kind of like, you could take it into like an Instagram filter or you could go like more of a vintage Western, you know, you could do a few things with this. I'll typically take it a little bit in the kind of bluer direction with these, just a little bit, just to kind of, uh, add a little bit of interest to the scene. Um, and then we might want to, once we've kind of figured that out, um, we might want to just tone that back a little bit and then we'll just refine our settings. So I probably bring the contrast down just a little bit, probably bring back the saturation a tad, um, our bloom, I think we could probably almost have a little bit more bloom without it. The scene kind of becomes a little bit harsh, you know, so. Uh, we could probably get away with having uh, a good, nice kind of soft amount of bloom on there. So uh, low threshold, uh, slightly higher intensity, I think usually looks pretty good. Um, but that's, I mean, that's essentially it. Uh, if we go to our camera, we can turn on some anti-aliasing, which I think would be nice to have. Um, we can also turn on, if we need to, we can turn on post processing in here, then it will work in the game view. So our game view will actually have it. Um, but you can, uh, do anti-aliasing through here. You can also do it in the process uh, in the project settings as well. So if you go edit uh, Project settings Drag that over here. You can actually change the settings in here. Uh, I think that's the quality Actually, no, we can change the lighting settings and quality Graphics yeah, so if you click on this, it'll bring up the universal render pipeline actual settings. So then you can go in here and then you've got a few settings in here. So I typically would go four cascades on lights. It just means you've got a little more lighting. Uh, if you wanted to, you could increase the anti-aliasing to eight times. Uh, you can do render scale stuff as well. I'm not sure if that takes too much of an effect. Uh, we'd probably want to have shadow resolution. I mean, I like cranking everything up personally, but it depends on what uh, your target platform is. Uh, yeah, let's just crank it all to the max. Yeah, and then shadow distance, you can use it as well to actually set how far the shadows cast out. So we might want to have shadows on our mountains in the background, uh, which usually looks pretty good. But uh, yeah, I think that's not too bad. I mean, that's just a really quick little guide on how to get some uh, really quick lighting in URP. And I think, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great place to start. So uh, have a play around with that, see what you can do. Uh, feel free to grab the directional lights in the scene and then move them around. You could go with like a, you know, you could have like an, like an afternoon shot with like long shadows, or you could go kind of like that midday, uh, you know, they're going to have a shootout on the street kind of thing. So there's a few options there. Uh, we've got a second directional light in this scene, uh, which is the kind of like the fill backlight. Um, I typically have that in there just to add a little more color to the backlight. If I turn that off, the buildings become a little bit uh, kind of hollow, I guess. It, it's just a nice little uh, additional color. Um, sometimes you can change it as well. You could make that like a blue color if you wanted to. That can look quite nice as like a backlight. Uh, but I think I, I kind of like having it a little bit more kind of like an overall theme of it being quite warm and colorful. So there you go. That's uh, Universal Render Pipeline and Polygon West. And, um, you know, check out our other tutorials and uh, hopefully you guys have fun with this pack.